So, Mark, we obviously have to start with Manchester United. And, I mean, the performance the other night against Crystal Palace was quite damning and mainly a lot of stick coming the way of Casemiro and Andre Arnana. Are these players actually good enough to still be at Manchester United or is it time to just really just rip up the rule book and start again? I think in relation to Anana, it's still season one. Um, if you look back to what he was like in the Champions League final, final at Ajax and Inter as well, um, his distribution is very good and he's one of the better goalkeepers in Europe. Man United haven't been able to play that way this year because of the injuries at centre-back. It's uh, We're not playing with a sweeper-keeper, so he's not been able to really display his best uh, um, skill set. But as a basic goalkeeper, I don't. I've said it all season. I, I don't have a lot of faith in his positioning, his ability to get down, uh, his covering his front post. These are basic goalkeeping skills that David de Gea was way better at. So, I think it was a mistake to get rid of de Gea. I think we did it a year early. Um, you've just got to hope that Anana in year two can improve on his basic goalkeeping skills, and we become a team that actually plays out from the back because then you will see an improvement in Anana, but there are issues around him. As for Casemiro, um, it's it's strange. Uh, been one of the best players in his position probably for the last decade. Was very good for Manchester United last season, but uh, over the last few weeks, it's almost been a nonchalance to his play. The way that he took the penalty, the first penalty, and just kicked it down the middle, um, trying to run the ball out against Palace, diving into tackles as the last man. Um, and this has been, you know, the, the header against Burnley where he tried to head it back in a packed penalty box. We lost, we would have won that game. So he is factually costing us uh, goals and, and points. So it's not good enough. And, and he's on £300,000 a week. And I really like Casemiro. I wouldn't expect this from him. He was the captain on Monday night, but his standard is on the floor and, and people are right to call it out. And do you think he's damaging his reputation? You know, this Real Madrid juggernaut, part of one of the best midfields Europe's ever seen? Or do you think this is just like a different part of his career? You know, just keep that side, the Real Madrid side to one side and United's a different ball game. He's still a great of the game, in my opinion. And that that's not going to change because of what he did at Real Madrid. I thought it was very good for Brazil in the World Cup as well. Um, he's in the Premier League, which is... We've had this chat this week about the Champions League, people talking about why Sabitz is in a final and Sancho's in a final, but they couldn't do it for Man United because the Premier League's a lot quicker. Whether it's better or not, it's a lot quicker. And for people like Casemiro, it's it's too quick for him at the moment. He is playing out of position. I don't think it damages his reputation, but he's certainly damaging United at the moment. Um, and I think he's probably going to be a high priority player to move on because of how he's playing and his wage. And, you know, we've spoke a lot over recent weeks about United players you want to get rid, but we might as well flip this question now. Who do you really want to keep? Is there like a core of players or a certain player you want to build this United team around, whether it's under Ten Hag or not? Well, I'm not going to say the players that I think are going to stay because that's pointless because we'd start talking about Anana and Mount because they've only been there a year. So I will just say the players that I, I think we should be keeping. And when you look at the Palace game, a few of them played in that game and they didn't play very well. But I think straight away, the younger players like Ganacho and Hoyland and Maynou, um, they're young players that should be in an environment that protects and nurtures them. And they're being hung out to dry. They're being expected to go away to Palace and be the focal point for that team. Um, and you look back at the class of 92 and they were playing with the likes of Cantona and Keane and Schmeichel. There is no protection. There is no seniority there, especially with no Bruno on Monday night. So those three players would be players that I would 100% be keeping and, and developing. Um, and then I think you've got Martinez, obviously, who's been injured all season. Luke Shaw. Delo has had a good season, although he was poor on Monday night. Bruno is another one I would keep. I think he showed, all right, he's not had a good season, but when he's not in the team, they're even worse. So, yeah, I think those would be the core players that personally I think I wouldn't be up for selling them. There's a few others that I'd give a chance to, like Mount and Anana. I think they should be given another chance maybe. Um, but, but yeah, it's not a big list. I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be disappointed if we sold 15 players this summer. And now since that result as well and... Chelsea on resurgent form. They're now above Manchester United in the table, which is quite wild to think, considering how much stick Chelsea have got for such a poor season. How do you react to that? Like, is is it now a bit of an embarrassment for Manchester United, considering the levels you and Chelsea are both at? I'm not surprised Chelsea are above Manchester United. Um, they've had a terrible season, so have Newcastle. I think Man United, Chelsea, Newcastle, in many ways, are very similar. Um, they're not in a position that they can shout about. It is embarrassing, you're right. 
Um, all three clubs have had major injury problems. And I think Spurs and Villa in somewhat some ways have been a bit fortunate that those three teams have all underperformed. I don't think anyone would have predicted all, all three. What's happening now is that Newcastle and Chelsea have managed to put teams out that can get results at the end of the season. Predominantly, they've got a back four, whether it's first choice or not. They've got a midfield. Man United don't have a back four. I mean, we've got an injured Johnny Evans, Casemiro, as we've spoken about, wan at left back. Eriksen doesn't look anywhere near the level anymore. Um, I think the difference with Chelsea is they've, they've found a way of putting a team together that actually has got a structure to it. And the same with Newcastle. Um, and I think that's the difference in the last few weeks. Uh, I don't think there's a lot between the teams. And I think all three of them have, have had really forgettable seasons. But if you can get that last Europa League spot, at least you can salvage something. And, and, and it won't be Man United in the league. We will not We will not be finishing above Chelsea or Newcastle. So it's going to come down to the FA Cup final, which will be very difficult against City. And a tweet of yours resurfaced after the Crystal Palace result. And I'm going to read it out now. You said... Back in 2022, when Ten Hag was appointed, watching these Ten Hag training videos, he's basically another Pep. Absolutely obsessed with style and high standards. It's a huge step up from what we were doing in the last three years. Do you stick by what you said there? Is it more, is it Ten Hag? You've always said to me, it's more the players than Ten Hag. But are you starting to think it's a bit of both? I mean, I stick by what I said because I will have seen the clip and I think I know the one it was. I mean, Man United were knocking the ball around very well. I remember on pre-season, we, we played very well as well. Um, I remember the first half an hour of Ranić against Crystal Palace. It was amazing. And then it stopped on 31 minutes and it never came back. So I do think that if you give Pep Guardiola this team, you're not going to pass it around like Man City. Um, if you give Jurgen Klopp this Man United side, they're not going to press high and dominate possession and create lots of chances. So it's definitely a... If I was speaking to Ineos, I'd say, look, you've definitely got an issue with the players. Um, we've seen it with Spurs in recent weeks. They've just fell off with a lot of players fit. Ange can't get them to do what he could do at the start of the season. I think players re revert to type. Um, and I think that that's what's happened with the United is that the, the players mentally, physically, IQ, footballing IQ, they just don't have the, the skills to do it. I think I've always said that these United players are more suited to Thomas Frank at Brentford with a counter-attacking style than they are a Man City. So the player profile is not right. Um, and look, if you sack Ten Hag and you bring in a Tuchel or you bring in a De Zerbi, they have a certain style of football that won't suit these players as well. So for me, it always comes back to the players. Yes, you've got to change the players. The results have to fall on the manager and it always does. But we've sacked many managers and we keep ended up in the same position. And my fear is you sack Ten Hag, you bring another manager that's going to play a certain way in. And if you don't clear those players out, we'll be back where we are in two years time. And this weekend, Manchester United face Arsenal in a pivotal game for the Gunners. Is this rivalry now? You know, it was big in the noughties. You remember Van Nistelrooy and Keown and all that sort of invincible run. Is it just poles apart now? It either seems that Arsenal in the doldrums and United were doing well and now it's flipped on its head. Is it just a significant rivalry anymore? I don't think it really is. I mean, the Premier League, I I'm fortunate enough, well, is it fortunate enough to be that old that I remember all of the <laughs> Premier League and... Without question, the best rivalry was Man United's Arsenal in the late 90s. Wenger and Sir Alex, Vieira Keane. It was brilliant. The Arsenal 98 double team was amazing. Then we won the treble. Um, it was a, And it culminated for Arsenal with the Invincibles. And then they disappeared for, what, 20 years. And then Arteta's brought them back. We then had a rival with Chelsea. We won three Premier Leagues in a row. Arsenal were nowhere. So, yeah, I think for 20 years, it's we've never really met. Um, it's been like ships passing in the night. And we've never been in the same port. Um Arsenal are fantastic at the moment. I think they deserve the league. Manchester United are nowhere near them. Um, it's a weird game on Sunday because uh, I want Arsenal to win the league over Man City, but I need Man United to win. So I can't say, yeah, we've lost so many games this season, just take the points. I can't say that. I think Arsenal are too good for Manchester United, but can Man United get close to Arsenal? Well, I mean, Arteta's the example. He finished eighth. People were singing Arteta out. They were getting T-shirts out. Um, and, and, and the last two years, they've been fantastic. So but this is why I would give Ten Hag another year. I don't like the manager market. I don't like a lot of the players. Um, can you get a new manager and clear the players out at the same time? I don't think you can. I think you've got to go one or the other. And then maybe next season you change Ten Hag or maybe he turns it around. But uh, we're miles off Arsenal at the moment. And they've got such a young squad. They're buying well every summer. They're still miles off Man City, I think, but they are the closest to them.
and you hinted there at managerial appointments. The Ten Hag movement is hotting up. Graham Potter's name is circling, but last night, Gareth Southgate's name near that top of the list. You know, links to Dan Ashworth, they have a good relationship. We know what you think of Gareth Southgate, but now that these, you know, rumours are hotting up even more, what's your latest reaction to it? I mean, because I, I do a lot of banter and jokes, I think people think I'm joking, but Gareth Southgate is somebody that I've said consistently for years, I can't stand him as England manager, as a coach. I find him boring, pragmatic, and look, we saw it in the international break. We played two games and we, we were rubbish. And he's got some of the best players in the world. I don't understand. I tell you what, I'd love to sign his agent up. Gareth's agent, have a, let's have a word, because the gigs he gets are incredible. He's, it's amazing to me. But on a serious note, if Man United appoint Gareth Southgate, it genuinely makes me feel sad. And, and that's not like me mocking him. I genuinely feel really sad inside, it, uh, almost vomit-inducing. I, I don't want him anywhere near Manchester United. <laughs> I don't think he's good enough to manage Crystal Palace or Fulham. Uh, I'd argue that Rob Edwards is better at Luton. I think there are managers in the Championship like McKenna and Mark Robbins who are way better than him. And if he gets the Man United job, for me, that's going to go down in my whole life as one of those moments where you just think, am I living in the Matrix? Because I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, he's managed some of the best England players we've ever produced, took us to tournaments and then blown it. Um, if he doesn't win the Euros this summer, I, I think I could win the Euros this summer with that team. So why he'd get the Man United job, I, I, I find it baffling. I think it's a, I think it'd be horrible to have him in charge. He's got nothing to do with Man United as well. I, I just don't, I just, I, I just can't stand the thought of it. I'm guessing you never saw the play Dear England with uh, with Ray Fiennes uh, about Gareth Southgate. I bet you wouldn't want to sit through that. I got, you know what? I got invited to that in London when it first came out uh, to the premiere or something like that. And I said, I politely turned down. I said, look, I'm sure it's an amazing production with amazing producers and actors, but I'd be a hypocrite to sit and watch something about Gareth <laughs> when, when I don't rate him as a coach. I mean, I, I, apparently... South, a... Southgate out flag in the front row just being like... Yeah, booing home. throughout the whole show. No, I'm, I'm sure he's a really nice guy and people, look, this is important. People don't take this on board when it, when you criticise players and managers. It's not personal. It's an entertainment business and you've got every right to say that's your favourite player, that's your favourite manager. And the flip side is, I don't rate that player, I don't rate that manager. For me, it's a, it's a massive no. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.